Hello students, uh, it's been a while since uh, you've seen me and, all, and also since I've seen you. Uh, so I want to give you a quick video here. I'll explain more of what I'm going to do here in a second. But uh, yeah, I figured out how to, how to make videos, put them on YouTube, and then send the links out. And so I'll probably just give you guys one of these a week. Uh, I'm using it more in some other classes. Uh, so it's hard to get them all done, but I'll just do a quick one for you here um, and kind of go from there. So I didn't I didn't put on a special outfit or do my hair. Uh, I don't think I even shaved today. So nothing special, but it at least gives you guys a quick chance to uh, hear from me. And as always, I'd love to hear from you. There's um, some of you have been doing some work last week I saw on, on IXL, but I'm always hopeful that more of you will. So maybe if you uh, see a fellow Geometry-3 student or, or have their contact, uh, send them a quick text to ask if they've been doing some work. If not, encourage them to do some. What I want to talk to you today about is some surface area and volume stuff. Uh, we've been using this time to just do a little bit of introductory work. Obviously, we'll go through all of this when we get back to school, but I wanted to give you at least something to work forward on. Sometimes it's hard to use all this time just to review. So uh, working forward on some things just to get some surface level introduction would be good. You'll have questions. That's fine. But at least by doing some things and trying some things, you're making progress. Even if you feel like you're getting stuck, you're making progress. So what we're going to do for surface area and volume is we're only going to focus on three types of three-dimensional solids. We're going to focus on prisms, cylinders, and spheres. That introductory website that you looked at from last week, that had lots of 3D figures like pyramids and cones and, and even other shapes, uh, I think called platonic solids. We're just going to focus on prism, cylinders, and, and spheres just to make things a little simpler. Things get a little more complex with cones and pyramids. And for right now, we're just going to try and keep it simple. So uh, over the next few days, you're going to be doing some surface area work, some, some volume work. And I, I guess what I first wanted to do is just give you some definitions of the three things solids that I mentioned and then go through an example problem with you. So what I'm going to do is, this is probably not the most efficient way, but I'm just going to show this here and you can pause this at any time if you need to come back. If you want to copy any of these down, great. Um, but I'm just going to show them there and you can pause that and look back at that more. But a prism, what is that? It's a 3D solid with two congruent polygonal bases in parallel planes. So you have to have two shapes that are exactly the same and parallel to each other, okay? However you want to do parallel, but they have to be parallel to each other. Um, and then all the other sides, all the other faces, we call them, are rectangles. That's what makes a prism, okay? A cylinder is, is the same thing, except those bases are circles. So you got these two circles that are congruent, and then they're just connected by this, it's basically a... a a rectangle that's wrapped around those circles okay so again could be standing like this or like this however two circles that are parallel and congruent and then wrapped around that makes a cylinder and then the sphere is just that idea of taking a point some point in space and then going a fixed distance maybe the distance of my pen all the way the end of my pen would trace out the sphere okay and i could go in any direction in 3d Right, and I create this ball type situation. All those points that are equidistant from the point right in the middle makes a sphere, okay? So we have all these formulas that I showed you on this as well, but the thing I'm gonna actually talk to you about today is how to do surface area of a prism, but not using this formula. You can use this formula, but some people, that gets really confusing to know what things are what, and so I'm gonna show you a way to do it without the formula. Okay. And that way uses nets. So I'm going to do a fairly, a little bit harder of a problem here, just so you, um, I think you probably could figure out some of the easier ones on your own. So we'll start with a harder one here. This right here is called a triangular prism. It's a triangular prism because its base face is a triangle. This triangle and this triangle are the bases. It's not the bottom rectangle. Base does not mean bottom in this case. Base is this triangle and this triangle because they are congruent and they are parallel to each other. 
Notice this bottom rectangle that it's kind of sitting on. There's no congruent rectangle up here parallel to it. So it can't be the base. So anyways, uh, we just talked about the base face being that triangle. The height, by definition, is the distance between your two faces. Okay, so the 15 is the height of this prism. And you could turn it like this, right? You know, set it up and so then the base is actually on the bottom and the height is how high it's going. But it doesn't have to be set that way. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the surface area. Okay, what is the surface area of this prism? And what I'm going to recommend is actually to, to draw this out. And I'm going to draw it out on a, on a separate one so we can see it. So to draw out each face. So we had two of them that looked like this. We had one on the bottom that was uh, 7 by 15. But that was kind of on the back side. This was on the bottom where this was 10 by 15. And then we had one more that kind of went across. Actually, I'm going to do that one down here. One more that kind of went along the, that diagonal piece. And that was 15. But what was this length? Okay. What was that length? That's equivalent to... That's what we're talking about when we talk about this length right here. What is that length? We don't know that. But we could find it because it's a right triangle. And that is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So we utilize information we've learned before in the Pythagorean theorem to find that value of x. 7 squared plus 10 squared equals x squared. 49 plus 100 so you get the square root of 149, which comes out to be approximately 12.2, right? So now we have it. So we can come here and say, all right, we're not missing that anymore. We now know it's 12.2, okay? So surface area is just adding up all the areas of the faces, all right? So if we were to take the area of this, we would, it's just a rectangle, 12.2 times 15, I've already done that calculation to save some time. That comes out to be 183 square units. 10 times 15 is obviously 150 square units. 7 times 15 is 105 square units. And then this is a triangle. So remember, the, a triangle, you have to take base. That's this length here times the height, which is 7 over 2. So you get 70 over 2, which is 35. But remember, there were two of those. So we had to take that times 2. So there were 70 square units for both the bases. So the final surface area is just adding all of these together. 70 plus 105 plus 150 plus 183. Adding all those together gives you a total of 508 square units. Okay, sorry that got a little messy there. I kind of ran out of room. But hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can calculate surface area by thinking about each face. All right? You can also use that formula. I'm not going to go through that right now. Um, I'm just going to show you this. One other thing I wanted to do is also show you how to calculate the volume of this. If I can get my eraser... Okay, so volume, volume this time is the amount of space inside of an object, right? And so to calculate volume, the formula, we do always go back to the formula for volume, which is big B times H. Big B is the area of the base. So that's this triangle here. So what's the area of that? We calculate it, calculate it on the other whiteboard it was 35 and then the height is just the distance between our two bases which is 15. So this is simply a matter of multiplying 35 and 15 and you get 525. This time it's cubic units because it's a volume. So volume actually is is quite a bit easier of a process uh, to calculate with these 3D solids over surface area but that should get you going. Uh, for the next few days, please 
contact me, send me an email, let me know how things are going. I want to hear from you. So great to see everyone. Take care. That's it.